Water flows downhill. Fluids move from high pressure to low pressure. These things seem to be obvious properties of the world. However, inside almost every steam train, there is a seemingly paradoxical device that uses the steam in the boiler to push water into the boiler. I love steam trains. They were one of the first practical forms of high speed land-based transport for goods. I love how they go chugga chugga, billowing out smoke and steam, and they are awesome in so many ways. To get the steam to operate, steam trains use a boiler to boil the water. The boiler is a sealed cylinder full of very hot gas at very high pressure. Now, if you are the type of person who thinks high pressure steamed in a sealed vessel is dangerous, then you are an extremely reasonable person. If the steam pressure becomes too high, the boiler will explode. The pressure release valve is one thing that helps control the pressure, but the major thing that keeps a boiler from exploding is the water inside it. When the water boils, it removes some of the heat and that helps control the temperature and pressure, thus stopping the boiler from having a rapid increase and then decrease in pressure that would require new euphemisms in an incident report. Since having liquid water in the boiler prevents a steam train from becoming a self-propelled bomb, it is very important to have a way to pump water into the boiler. The source of a train's power is its steam, and the steam is created in the boiler. So a steam train needs to use the pressure of the steam to pump water into the boiler at the same pressure as the steam. This is done using a device called an injector. This incredible device has only three moving parts, a non-return valve, the steam, and the water. High pressure steam flows in here, and then it is constrained by this cone called the steam cone. Water is sucked up through this pipe and is combined with the steam in the combining cone. The water is then delivered to the boiler by the delivery cone. The water pushes through through this one-way valve and into the boiler. This looks like it shouldn't work because the pressure on both sides should be equal. So you would think that nothing would flow. The reason that it works is due to the properties of steam and the principle of the conservation of energy. Conservation of energy is the rule that energy cannot be created or destroyed but only transformed into different forms. So what forms of energy are contained within the steam? Well, there is heat. Inside steam, there are septillions of water molecules. All these particles are flying around at high speed, seemingly at random, rotating and vibrating, screwing with my YouTube compression. All of this motion constitutes a form of energy called kinetic energy. If we add up all the particle motions and then cancel out the motions going in opposite directions, we will get a net motion, which corresponds to the flow of the steam. So we can divide kinetic energy between heat and net motion. However, there are some other forms of energy stored within the steam. Each water molecule has a complicated electric field around it. One that is a touch too complex to go into right now, but it has the effect that at long distances, water molecules are attracted to each other until they get close. And when they are very close, they start to repel each other. Let's watch two water molecules that are flying towards each other. As they get closer, the power of the attractive force grows accelerating them faster and faster. Then they get too close and the repulsive effect takes over. The molecules will slow down, stop and turn around. As I said, energy can't be created or destroyed. So where does the energy come from that increases the speed and where does it go when the speed decreases? The answer is energy is stored inside the electric fields around the molecules. You can think of these as being little springs between the molecules, which seems to be the go-to metaphor for YouTubers. However, I think there is a metaphor that is a little bit more useful. If you graph the amount of potential energy between the molecules over a distance, you get this sort of graph. What is neat about this graph is you can think of the molecules rolling around on it and falling down the slope 
picking up speed and then doing a cool half pipe trick on off the bit there where it goes up. One of the things that makes a gas a gas is that the molecules have enough speed that when they collide they can escape this ditch of attraction around the molecule. In much the same way the spaceship when it's fast enough will reach escape velocity and escape orbit. So in steam at any moment some of the steam's energy ends up being stored as potential energy. The stored energy from the particles colliding is directly related to the pressure. And the stored energy in the attractive force between the mo water molecules, I'm going to label on this pie chart as latent energy. Let's get back to the injector. Inside the steam cone, which again is the first cone where the steam comes in, the steam is forced into a narrowing space. This causes it to speed up. It's like when you hold your finger over the tip of a hose and the water squirts out faster. Same principle. Basically, if you have two tubes connected of different sizes, they have to be conveying the same amount of gas through them, the one that is more narrow will have to push the gas through faster to get the same amount of gas passing in the same amount of time. However, we're all about conservation of energy now. Faster moving gas has more kinetic energy than slower moving gas. So where does the energy that accelerated the gas come from? It comes from the potential energy related to the pressure. The converging cone converts the gas's pressure energy into kinetic energy. This has the result that the pressure of the gas is reduced. So by the time it is passing through the really small hole at the end of the nozzle, the pressure is below air pressure. This will suck water up into this part of the injector. The steam will then push the water into our combining cone. However, something else interesting happens with the steam. The water is cooler than the steam, so the steam will cool and condense into water at a molecular level. All this means is that the high velocity steam molecules will get slowed down by the collision and fall into that little gully. In effect, being captured into a type of orbit. Since all the molecules of water have dropped into this lower energy state, that potential energy has to go somewhere in order to preserve the conservation of energy. This energy will get converted into accelerating the water and speeding it up further. At a molecular level, it's like all the molecules are doing slingshot flyby maneuvers, each accelerating the other a tiny little bit. This stream of water then enters the diverging delivery cone, which slows the flow of water down. Speed is transformed back into pressure. However, since some of the latent energy has been converted into speed, when this is undone and turned into pressure, there's now more pressure at this other end. Enough pressure to push past the non-return valve and start filling the boiler. Isn't that so neat? And if you think things like this are neat, please subscribe for more. Thank you very much.